Welcome back, everyone. Soccer, or football as the rest of the world calls it, is the most popular sport on earth. With more than 4 billion fans worldwide, the sport has captured the hearts, or at least the attention, of people all around the globe. Yeah, Val, that's so amazing. And as part of our Hispanic Heritage Month celebration, Your View is carrying several new programs, including a fascinating series called The Soccer Academy. Producer and host Antonio Suave is here to tell us more. Welcome to Main Street Living. Uh, it's great to be with you. Thank you very much. So happy to have you here. So you produce and host a series called The Soccer Academy, which That's has right. been running since, what, 2003? So what yep. can viewers I'm, experience in this show? The Soccer Academy, the basic premise is to spread a message of peace through soccer around the world. And of course, as you mentioned in the intro here, soccer is really the world's most popular sport. So as a vehicle, as a tool, it's really very effective when we talk about peace, especially with younger soccer players, their parents, their, their extended families and coaches worldwide. So, you know, it really has quite a bit of appeal. Yeah. And, and side note here, Antonio Suave, any relation to Rico Suave, just so we know? Uh, <laughs> no, but you know, I get that a lot. So I wish there was. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, uh, very well loved and soccer is very well loved around the world. Um, and with this show, you've gotten to go to the ends of the earth to talk about this game. What is it about soccer that's just so universally endearing? Well, you know, let's talk perhaps a little bit about that. We've been we've shot the show in places as diverse as Jerusalem, of course, in Israel. Uh, we've shot the show in Damascus, Syria. We've shot it in Amman, Jordan. And now we just recently filmed two episodes in Morocco, in the mm. cities of Marrakesh and Safi. So really, you know, from an international perspective, I think what appeals to people, apart from the soccer elements, because there's a soccer uh, instructional component, is the fact that there is a lot of cultural exposure. So people like to see, you know, what's new, what's fascinating, and what's interesting in different cultures around the world. And that's what we try to do, because the show is not just instructional uh, in nature, but it is also educational, if you will. So it's a bit of a travelogue. But some of the interesting stories have to do with places like Damascus, Syria. We were actually there filming just prior to the outbreak of the civil war in Syria. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, the message that we're spreading and the tool and the vehicle we're using soccer that is, uh, is very effective. Now, in some places, you know, we go there uh, to mitigate some of the damage that's been done, if you will, in, in, let's just say, the political governmental sphere and so on. But of course, we transcend all of that. We don't address uh, politics. But, you know, the other thing we do do is actually embrace uh, religion and culture. So, for instance, when we're filming in Syria, you know, we'll also film next to a mosque and, and, and talk about some of the positive attributes of the people who are spreading peace through both soccer as well as their faith and their culture and their identity. Mm, there's so much we can all learn from different cultures. And I love that you're doing that. And we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month here on Main Street Living. And I know last year you shot several episodes in Mexico. So yes. what was that like? And yeah. how much does soccer play into Hispanic culture? Well, I mean, you know, very, it's very prevalent and very prominent, of course. Um, you know, from, from, uh, the viewpoint of Mexico, and I had been there, of course, uh, you know, several times in the past and spent a lot of time in Latin America and places like Brazil and Argentina and Colombia, uh, too, where soccer is pretty much you could call them the national pastimes. So when you're doing it in a place like Mexico, of course, there's just an inherent love for the sport. And the sport is ingrained into the culture, you know, a lot like even though soccer has grown dramatically here in the States. Uh, soccer is more like Sunday football is here, you know, or Saturday college football. Mm. So everything mm -hmm. revolves around, you know, the lead up to the, some of these major games. So we had the wonderful opportunity to uh, film with some of the clubs like Leones Negros in uh, the city of Guadalajara. We got to film with uh, uh, the former coach of Pumas 
and we got to film with one of the all-time great coaches, uh, Herrera, also known as El Piojo. So, you know, it was a beautiful experience, and we were right there near Azteca Stadium filming with him, and uh, he's, he's really larger than life. But, you know, uh, from a Mexican perspective, also here in the States, as we know, because that culture is so uh, prominent, prevalent in the States, and it really is linked to soccer most of the time to the big teams in Mexico City and the big teams in Guadalajara, uh, I think it was pretty well received. So we got to film five episodes last year in Mexico. And of wow. course, the, the other reason we focused on Mexico was not just the vicinity with the states and the cultural affinity and so on. But, you know, the, the, the pandemic limited some of our uh, some of our other episodes that we had planned in other mm -hmm. areas. But it really it worked out very well. So we were able to become fully ingrained and engrossed in Mexican culture during that time. And people especially liked the fact that we stopped at some of uh, some of the more exotic markets in Guadalajara and Mexico City. And people even saw what it looks like to have a chocolate covered scorpion for dinner. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. You guys, you guys haven't had that before? Yeah, uh, so you said that you've said that one of the goals of the show is to spread global peace. How can yeah. soccer accomplish that? Well, you know, I've been I've been involved with an entity known as the United States Institute of Peace in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. since 2014. So, you know, apart from the show, uh, some of my background has to do with foreign policy. So I'm very much of a believer that we can achieve higher standards of peace and certainly much greater uh, methods and modes of collaboration on a global scale. It's just we got to figure out how to do it and speak a language that is common. Mm -hmm. So certainly soccer is one of those languages, but you know, it's a tool, it's a vehicle, uh, like many other things that transcend politics, mm -hmm. right? So uh, arts and culture, uh, mm -hmm. entertainment to a large degree, you can use all of those platforms to create more of a cooperative environment between and among cultures around the world. Oh, yeah. And you're spreading so much good information. I love everything that you're doing. we got to wrap things up here. But quickly, where can our viewers go to get more information and watch the show? You can go on SoccerAcademy.tv. Uh, there's also a Soccer Academy channel on YouTube. So it's the Soccer Academy television channel. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much, Antonio. That. Thank you. It's great talking with you. Thank you. Me too. All right. Well, let's just keep the fun times rolling. Coming up, we are celebrating the Dominican community in Rhode Island. Mm.